Today we're covering the top 10 mechanical keyboards. We've tested a lot of keyboards in recent reviews for the channel, so we thought why not make some buying guides to help consumers easily pick the best fit for their needs, whether it's for gaming, working, or within their budget. On that point, we've also considered what consumers actually need. Even though there's $250 keyboards out there, dropping that kind of cash has to have a purpose. Yeah, that's right. If the features don't support the price, we won't recommend that. And realistically, very few people want to spend that kind of cash. Yeah, true. So while this is a top 10 mechanical keyboard list, we'll give best in class recommendations, and there has to be value for the asking price. You really need to consider what features are worth paying for, as even at the $120 level, that's a pretty insane amount of money to be spending on a keyboard. And we've got budget recommendations too. If you decide one of these keyboards is right for you and grab one through our affiliate links below, it does help us out a bit here, so thanks for your support. If you want to keep up with our releases, you should give us a quick follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. We also have our episodes up on techspinreview.com. Don't forget to tell us your take on which keyboard is best, if there's one you think should be included on the list, or a model you want to see reviewed. We'll also be doing a top 10 membrane list, so stay tuned for that video coming soon. Let's check out our top 10 mechanical keyboards. The new FSP Hydro Pro G is reliable even in harsh environments. A compact, fully modular 80 plus gold supply with dual ATX 8 pin, eco switch, 10 year warranty, and it's perfect for your next build. Check it out at the link below. The options we'll present are unordered, and we've actually got 13 models mentioned with our best picks in the summary section. There's chapters you can use to skip to the section you want. Now, this list gets a bit pricey, so hold on to your wallets. Here we go. First out of the gate, HyperX has a number of good options, even getting into budget range territory, starting with the Alloy FPS Pro at $70, which is a TKL or 10 keyless board, meaning the number pad on the right is chopped off for a smaller footprint. It's a decent gaming keyboard, and with all HyperX keyboards we've tested, the build quality is very good here. With an internal steel frame and removable USB cable, the Alloy FPS Pro comes with either Cherry MX Red switches, which are linear and quiet, or Cherry MX Blue switches with a clicky sound. It's an no-frills offering, so be aware it's not RGB with only red backlighting, and there's no software support, so no macros. Media keys and volume controls are accessible through pressing function and a combination, but there are no dedicated keys. Now this is a minimally designed offering, so let's take a step up. The HyperX Alloy Origins is a full-size mechanical keyboard going for 110 bucks and boasts an aircraft-grade aluminum body. And for switches, it offers linear quiet HyperX Red, clicky HyperX Blue, or tactile HyperX Aqua versions. The Alloy Origins has amazing full per key RGB backlit keys, software profiles and macros, a detachable USB-C cable, and three-level height adjustment. Usually with a detachable cable, the sacrifice you make is the possibility of a USB pass-through but it doesn't have our dedicated media volume keys, and the keycaps themselves are just okay at this price range. There's also an Alloy Origins Core TKL variant, which is going for 90 bucks with either red or aqua switch options. Just north of that price is their new Alloy Elite 2 at 130 bucks, a full-size HyperX red switch steel frame keyboard with super beautiful RGB illumination and ABS pudding keycaps. Finally, dedicated media keys, a volume control wheel, and a top light bar for more RGB goodness. Non-detachable USB, but there's a single USB 2.0 pass-through port topside. A really great looking keyboard, but at 130 bucks, getting pretty expensive. On to Logitech. They have their $95 Logitech G413 Carbon, which is a good full-size mechanical gaming keyboard with Romer G switches. With single color red LED backlighting, it does have software control and a single USB pass-through, so that's a big bonus. However, no dedicated media or volume keys. And for keyboards with USB pass-through, you'll have two USB jacks to plug into the back of your PC. One for the keyboard and one for the pass-through. The construction for Logitech keyboards is solid, and this one's no different. A good build for this entry-level MET keyboard. It does also ship in a silver top with white LED backlighting, which looks nice, but is much harder to find. So let's check. The Logitech G512 Second Edition LightSync goes for around $100, with a full-size anodized aluminum top plate for rigid construction. With the brushed-looking surface comes either clicky or Romer G tactile switches. There's LightSync full RGB software integration with support for macros, but no dedicated media or volume keys or USB pass-through. 
It's the last keyboard well recommended from Logitech as their next level up is the Pro X at 150, which is both hard to find and too rich for my blood. But we'll mention it as it's a TKL model with GX blue, brown, or red switches. And the switches are actually removable and swappable. It comes with a keycap and key switch puller included. Corsair is excelling at making quality mechanical keyboards, and their entry model Corsair K68 RGB full-size mechanical gaming keyboard usually goes around 120 bucks, but their older model red LED only version saw a price drop to 90 bucks. With the linear quiet cherry MX red switches, it's dust and spill resistant, but only has red LED backlighting, though there are perky effects. With software integration for macros, it also supports volume and media keys too. With a soft touch detachable palm rest, it has dedicated volume and media keys in the very accessible right corner location. Very good. This model has been out for a while. It received an RGB refresh version uh, summer of 2018. And if you aren't afraid of second hand, renewed RGB versions occasionally pop up for a good price on Amazon. Now we wouldn't usually recommend grabbing the Corsair K70 RGB Mark II, which launched for 180 bucks and sits currently at the $160 mark, but it's on sale at 125 bucks right now. So this is a much more reasonable price, though still expensive for a keyboard. The board offers all five Cherry MX variants, uh, red, brown, blues, speed, and silent, though the Amazon listing we found had the red and low profile red. This full-size RGB per-key backlit board is built with an aircraft-grade aluminum frame, which is very sturdy. There's a detachable wrist rest, volume and media keys, and a USB pass-through for connectivity. Onboard memory allows three profiles to be stored independent of software, and it works with Corsair's IQ software to set up macros and lighting sync with other Corsair components. And if you can get the K70 RGB at Mark II on sale, you might want to consider this for serious gaming. We've reviewed the MSI Vigor GK50 Low Profile, which goes for 100 bucks. On sale, we saw for 70 bucks currently. And this full-size keyboard features linear kale low profile keys with per-key RGB backlighting. With a brush top metal plate that adds rigidity, this super solid keyboard has matched RGB lock and gaming lights and a really great typing experience. MSI software is there to set up macros and light effects though no dedicated media or volume keys, and at this price range, there's no wrist rest. They do include a keycap puller as well as a convex left alt and control button for a different gaming feel. We had a really good experience with this gaming keyboard, and if you're looking for a low profile, compact, full size, that's mechanical, this slick metal gray design might just fit your budget. The Razer Huntsman Gaming came out 2018, but its inclusion on this list shows the quality of the features and construction. It originally made this list due to a sale price of $90, but at the original $150 listing, it would be a bit too expensive. It offers chroma RGB lighting in a full-size package with clicky or linear optical mechanical switches. Software syncs with games for lighting and controls other gear from over 30 partners and features Philips Hue integration. Macros can be quite complex and fully remapped to suit your gaming needs. However, it has no dedicated volume or media keys, and there's no wrist stress included, a strange omission at this price point. Razer produces a pink variant too, available with clicky optical switches, also for 150 bucks. If you want even more RGB, the Elite version that has souped up car underglow lighting and media keys, but prepare to take a hit at $200, though we did see it on sale for 170 bucks. Looks amazing, but we think it's too expensive for what you get. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Next, the Asus ROG Strix Scope is a worthy contender. A full-size yet a compact keyboard with Cherry MX black, blue, brown, red, and speed silver options, and we found the silent red version coming in at $120. With an aluminum top plate and RGB per key backlighting that works with Aura Sync, there's a key puller as well as the silver WASD keys if that better fits your style. It's got great build quality with cable management channels in the bottom, although we saw a report that the keys have the slightest bit of wobble, but it doesn't affect the usage. There's on-the-fly macro recording, and it also features a stealth key if you found a way to game while you should be doing something else. The left control button has been made longer, making it easier to hit, and with a good compact full size, it is a very good offering with lots of customizability. Though no dedicated volume or media buttons, there's also a TKL version with a smaller footprint at 10 bucks less, coming in at $110. 
Also with an electro punk edition for some flair. If you want the feel of a mechanical keyboard but maybe you don't have the budget because 2020 sucks, the Habit Gaming Keyboard and Mouse Combo can upgrade your whole setup at a budget price of under 50 bucks. We saw it on sale amazingly for $35. The full-size keyboard is equipped with clicky kale blue switches on the loud side with all the typical features like full key rollover and 100% anti-ghosting. The backlit keys are a set rainbow LED pattern and although the lighting patterns can change, the colors will remain the same. The aluminum top case provides strength, though there's no volume or media keys, of course. No driver needed means no software and also no macros. The included mouse goes from 800 to 4800 DPI, which is plenty for most gamers. Note that there are many different Habit keyboards on offer on Amazon, some of which are not well differentiated as to which product they are, but there seems to be a low profile blue version and others that work with software. Note that we checked customer reviews and found mostly positive feedback, though you do get what you pay for, and one user after a few months noticed key ghosting and multiple key presses. The Red Dragon Surara or K582 is the best out of Red Dragon's mainstream offerings on Amazon, coming in at 50 bucks with a full size design, RGB and silent linear Otemu red switches. The switches actually aren't silent at all according to customer feedback as these switches make sound and the keyboard frame seems to echo the noise. For this reason, if you're looking at Red Dragon, we recommend this keyboard over other cheaper and noisier Red Dragon offerings, such as the Kumara or K552 for 35 to 40 bucks, or the Vara or K551 for 40 to 45 bucks. Getting back to the Serrara, it has N key rollover, a metal base plate, which dampens the sound a little and adds sturdiness, and it comes with rubber feet as the other two lower models do not. With software to set up macros, it also may come with accessories like a keycap and switch puller, though the switches are soldered on the board and the keycap puller is too wide, which may cause damage to the keys. So it may be best not to use these accessories. We also saw customer feedback where after months of use, some keys randomly don't work and some RGB failing and reports the numpad area keys are non-standard width. But for the price, if you wanna try a mechanical keyboard with full RGB on the cheap, this one may be what you're looking for. Credit goes to switchandclick.com for their excellent research on why the Serrara is the one to pick from the lineup. Last but not least, we don't feel the list would be complete without an entry from SteelSeries. The SteelSeries Apex 7, which released summer of 2019. Pushing the price envelope in both a full size for $160, $150 on sale, and a TKL version for $30 less. Both the full size and TKL offer red, brown, or blue switch options. The excellent build quality comes with a soft finish aluminum top plate, and there's no wobbling from the keys, though the slightly matte looking surface finish does attract dust. With a single incline adjustment, the full RGB backlighting is very impressive, and the USB pass-through is a great addition. There's a mini OLED screen also for settings and a menu, and a wheel and six macro keys assigned to the insert home cluster. With a magnetic wrist rest, software is excellent and provides full control over the macros and light effects. While the OLED might seem gimmicky, being able to access functions while in game might be useful to some. We found a sale price of 150 bucks. Make no mistake, this is really expensive, but it'll come down to are the features worth it for you? For us, maybe not. I know you thought we forgot, but yeah, we have to mention 60% keyboards, which has both the numpad and the home and arrow key sections both cut off. Some gamers swear by them, so even though Razer introduced one, the build quality isn't quite at the high bar just yet, so we're gonna skip it. There's the Ducky 1 2 Mini we saw for 125 bucks, and the Anpro 2 at 110. A quick feature comparison. The 1 2 Mini we saw with Cherry MX Red or Silent Red, though evidently most Cherry switches are available. The Pro 2 has Gatoron or Kale box switches, though we heard you can get Cherry also. Both have a great typing experience, the field depends on what switches you pick, obviously, and both have PBT double shot keycaps with extra keycaps and pullers. While both can do macros, the Anboard comes with software for easy customization to key bindings, macro adjustments, and layers, which is easier to use than the onboard ducky functions. The Mini has mouse emulation, but the Pro 2 has Bluetooth pairing with up to four devices and a 1900 milliamp hour battery. The 1-2 Mini has dual height adjustment feet, and the Pro 2 has no height adjustment. 
And while both have full RGB customization, the Ducky 1 2 Mini takes this point with really nice and bright lighting, whereas the Ann Pro 2 is more subtle. The Ducky brand is known for its durability and reliability, though Ann has definitely made a name for itself with a high quality 60% mechanical gaming keyboard. So we'll start with the full size best mechanical keyboard on sale. If you could find it for the sale price we saw of 90 bucks, the Razer Huntsman Gaming is discounted down from 150. And for the features and build, it's a really, really good deal. Plus it has that great Razer software to control it. Razer has a reputation for great products and it's well earned. If you can get it, then it'll serve you pretty darn well. For the best low profile mechanical, the MSI Vigor GK50 delivers a really good feel with a low profile form factor with macros and some features and a very sturdy build. With silvery looks and excellent RGB, it's a great choice for gaming with linear keys for a performance gaming experience. And we saw it coming in at hundred bucks, though we did see it on Amazon for $70 on sale. If you need a shorter keyboard, you'll be looking at TKL or 10 keyless models. For the best TKL mechanical keyboard, the HyperX Alloy Origins Core TKL offers a compact bundle without extra keys, but still with macro capabilities and some good looking RGB and software control. We've tested a couple of HyperX models and have good experiences with gaming and productivity thus far. So that brings us to the best mechanical keyboard overall, and this is going to be the HyperX Alloy Origins. At $110, it's a bit pricey, but at least it won't break the bank. It has three adjustable angles as well as a detachable USB-C cable, and you'll have a choice from red, blue, and aqua switches, all for the same price. It's also compatible with PS4 and Xbox One, and because it has wide compatibility, it's likely also to be compatible going forward with the new generation of consoles. We'll try to grab one for testing soon. I think the bigger problem will be trying to get a PS5. <laughs> with HyperX's good software and nice RGB lighting, it checks all of our boxes and should be a really great performer for you. Now, obviously, the best wow factor mechanical keyboard has got to be the HyperX Alloy Elite 2 which has pudding caps and glorious RGB to light up your room. It'll certainly be a showpiece for your setup. At $130, it comes with all the bells and whistles and has a sturdy build quality, volume and media keys, USB pass-through, and PS4 and Xbox compatibility. Coming in just $20 higher than the Origins, we feel the extra money in this case is well spent and worth it. The best 60% gaming keyboard, the title goes to the Anpro 2. Considering all factors, the Bluetooth connectivity and battery, and included software to make things easy for the user, all at 15 bucks less, makes this a clear choice. The lack of feet did factor into the Ann's ranking, and though the RGB is definitely better on the Ducky, usability is key for gamers, and if you really need it, you can always add more RGB elsewhere, so why not make customization easy for yourself? Drum roll! For what you've been waiting for, the best budget mechanical keyboard for PC, is the HyperX Alloy FPS Pro uh, Red Backlight, which comes in at 70 bucks, or the MSI Vigor if it's on sale, which also comes in around 70 bucks with RGB. By the way, check the link for that video up here. 70 bucks seems to be the entry point for mechanical keyboards, so this may be a starting point for some. Both of these keyboards don't state that they support PS4 or Xbox, so be careful. So it may be possible that the normal keys work, but any features probably won't, as that will require Windows drivers, or maybe just set up on Windows first if they save profiles in onboard memory, but this is untested. If you're doing console and you want mechanical, better to get a board that says it's compatible. Now I bet you thought we were gonna recommend either the Red Dragon Surawa or Habit mechanical offerings for the best budget mechanical keyboard, but no, and there's a reason. While the quality generally for these models may be okay, there seems to be some occasional short-term problems. Sure, we may be a bit more critical of these entry-level brands than the more established names, and yes, these budget models may work well enough for most users. But we really care about long-term reliability, so we can't stand behind these offerings for now. At Techspin, we, like our viewers, don't want to have to deal with units failing, issues, uh, returns, or exchanges, especially since we're in the middle of the ocean here in Taiwan, and shipping from here is expensive. We'll revisit this in the future as their manufacturing processes mature and have less consumer feedback with issues. An honorable mention goes to Asus for their ROG Strict Scope keyboard. At $120, it's a bit higher priced, but does come with some unique features. The on-the-fly macros, stealth mode, and cable management channels is part of the nice overall look, and it has silver WASD gaming keys and a key puller if you want to swap. The TKL Electro Punk Edition is also a unique offering here. 
If you want it easier to hit left control button and don't need dedicated media or volume keys, maybe this one's for you. Just keep in mind there's no PlayStation or Xbox support listed. While we didn't cover all points for every model, hopefully this overview gave you some more information to help your buying decision. And if you pull the trigger, please use our affiliate links. It helps support us here with no extra cost to you. For our latest releases, don't forget to give us a quick follow on social media or a text pin review on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And future updates or issues that we find will be added to this uh, textpinreview.com post. And check us out there for more episodes. What mechanical keyboard are you looking at or what are you using right now? Is there something you're drooling over? And if you find a good deal on Amazon or eBay, let us and our viewers know, that'd be great. If this review was informative, we'd appreciate you mashing that thumbs up button or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We do check the comments, so if you have a question or if you missed something, then please do tell us down below. And we always like to hear your ideas for episodes, so let us know what you'd like to see reviewed. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. The backlit keys are a set rainbow. RGB per key back backlit. Blah, blah, blah. PS4 and Xbox One. I said uh, Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> I said like Xbox, Xbox <laughs> One. We were going to recommend either the Red Dragon. <laughs> Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Uh.